What's up guys? It's Amanda Elise here and welcome back to my art channel. Also welcome to you if you are new to my art channel and thank you so much for being here. As I'm sure you could tell by the intro and, and the title of this video, today I'm going to be sharing with you another video in the Art Stravaganza 2016 collaboration. It's a collaboration that was started by JMI here on YouTube and it includes so many amazing artists including JMI, myself, Nairo Busby, Edward Zuo, and Lynn Doodles. They are all here on YouTube, so I will have all of their links down below, as well as links to their other social medias so that you can keep up with what they're doing. You will definitely not regret it. They are all so amazing and just so talented. And they've created a lot of cool art for this collective so far, so definitely go check that out. We posted one other theme prior to this, and that was our palette challenge. This prompt is a myth challenge, so we had to create a piece based off a myth of our choice. I chose a myth that was a little bit more local. It's something that I personally grew up hearing and I immediately knew that I wanted to do it for this challenge, but the myths that we chose are from all different cultures and they are so, so cool. I'm over the moon in love with all the pieces that the other artists have created and I know you guys will love them too. So definitely go check them out and stay tuned because we have more art extravaganza videos to come in the near future. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my piece and I'm also going to read you my myth. It is a little bit on the spooky side but I heard this growing up as a kid and I turned out alright. So <laughs> let's just get into it. So. My myth is the story of La Llorona, or the weeping woman. It's a very common theme among different cultures. Um, you usually have like a legend of a weeping woman or a woman in white, that kind of thing. So there are different versions of this. I am just going to be reading a version that is closest to the one that I grew up hearing. And I will link the website where I found it down below. Long years ago, in a humble little village, there lived a fine-looking girl named Maria. Some say she was the most beautiful girl in the world, and because she was so beautiful, Maria thought she was better than everybody else. As Maria grew older, her beauty increased and her pride in her beauty grew too. When she was a young woman, she would never look at the young men from her village. They weren't good enough for her. When I marry, Maria would say, I will marry the most handsome man in the world. Then one day, into Maria's village rode a man who seemed to be just what she had been talking about. He was a dashing young ranchero, the son of a wealthy rancher from the southern plains. He could ride like a Comanche. In fact, he, if he owned a horse and it grew too tame, he would give it away and go rope a wild horse from the plains. He thought it wasn't manly to ride a horse if it wasn't half wild. He was so handsome, and he could play the guitar and sing beautifully. Maria made up her mind that was the man for her. She knew just the trick to win his attention. If the ranchero spoke when they met on the pathway, she would turn her head away. When he came to her house in the evening to play the guitar and serenade her, she wouldn't even come to the window. She refused all costly gifts. The young man fell for her tricks. That haughty girl Maria, he said to himself, I know I can win her heart. I swear I'll marry that girl. And so everything turned out as Maria planned. Before long, she and the ranchero were engaged, and soon they were married. At first, things were fine. They had two children. They seemed to be a very happy family together. But after a few years, the ranchero went back to the wildlife on the prairies. He would leave the town and be gone for months at a time. And when he returned home, it was only to visit his children. He seemed to care nothing for the beautiful Maria. He even talked of setting Maria aside and marrying a woman of his own wealthy class. As proud as Maria was, of course, she became angry with the ranchero. She also began to feel anger towards her children, because he paid attention to them and just ignored her. One evening, as Maria was strolling with her two children on the shady pathway near the river, the ranchero came by in a carriage. An elegant lady sat on the seat beside him. He stopped and spoke to his children, but did not even look at Maria. He whipped the horses up on the street. 
When she saw that, a terrible rage filled Maria, and it all turned against her children. And although it is sad to tell, the story says that in her anger, Maria seized her two children and threw them into the river. But as they disappeared downstream, she realized what she had done. She ran down the bank of the river, reaching her arms out to them, but, what, but they were gone. The next morning, a traveler brought the word to the villagers that the beautiful woman lay dead on the bank of the river. That is where they found Maria, and they laid her to rest where she had fallen. But the first night Maria was in the grave, the villagers heard the sound of crying down by the river. It was not the wind, it was La Llorona crying, where are my children? And they saw a woman walking up and down the bank of the river dressed in a long white robe, the way they had dressed Maria for her burial. On many a dark night, they saw her walk the river bank and cry for her children, and so they no longer spoke of her as Maria. They called her La Llorona, the weeping woman, and by that name she is known today. Children are warned not to go out in the dark, for La Llorona might snatch them up and never return them. So that is the story behind the myth that I chose. It had a lot of personal meaning to me because it was one that I grew up hearing, you know, stuff like, you better behave or La Llorona's gonna throw you in the river, that kind of thing. So <laughs> I definitely wanted to do this for my myth just because it does have kind of a personal connection to me, but I also just wanted to do something out of my comfort zone. I wanted to do something darker, kind of scarier. You know, I do a lot of like cute drawings on my channel, but I wanted to mix it up a little. So sorry if this isn't your taste, but I had a lot of fun creating this. So I sketched this drawing out in my sketchbook and I did a lot of practice just to get the pose right and I was really really happy with it, especially the hands. So once I was happy with the pose, I scanned it in and made it a little bit bigger just so I could fit it on this 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper. I took the watercolor paper and created a border around it using just artist's tape which is kind of just like masking tape. That way it just has a nice clean edge around it. Then I went in with my watercolors. I mostly used the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set which you see there on the left. It's just the traveling set and I've really, really been liking it. So that is what I used for most of this piece and then I have just an empty palette um, kind of on the top of the screen you can see it and that's just where I mixed custom colors that I wanted for this piece in particular. I also really tried to create a background in this piece and I do really really love the way the background came out. I used some pictures from Google just as kind of like basic reference but I wanted like a creepy kind of forest looking thing and I definitely wanted to include the river just because the river is kind of a big part of the story. Um, as you heard when I read it to you guys. Hopefully you guys like that too. Um, I wanted to just include a little bit of the story just so it kind of set the mood for the piece. Um, yeah, but I had so much fun creating this piece for the collective. It was definitely a challenge, but I had so much fun creating it um, and it was totally, totally worth all the time put into it. I think the biggest thing that I struggled with was probably the dress. As you can see, I did kind of save it for last, um, or at least closer to the end of the piece, um, because I wanted it to be white, but not clean, considering she's been buried and, you know, was hanging out by the river all day. So <laughs> um, I wanted it to be a little bit, like, grungy looking, and then I decided to add, like, blood splatters on her dress and one of the blood splatters you can see kind of on the lower left side of her dress is in the shape of a handprint and I wanted it to be like a smaller handprint like maybe it was from one of her own children or one of the children that she kidnapped. I know it's creepy right? <laughs> but like I said I heard this story in my childhood and I turned out okay um, but it's a very very common narrative where I grew up and um, yeah, it has a lot of personal meaning, I suppose. <laughs> um, I also just continue to go back in the background and darken things up. I also go in, I don't know if I recorded it, but I go in with some 
colored pencils just to really push the darks, especially in the trees because it just, all in all, it still looked too light to me and I wanted it to be darker and scarier. I have a problem with my artwork where I don't push dark colors quite as much as I should, so I'm really trying to get better about that and not necessarily using like harsh blacks and whites for contrast, but just really getting good dynamic lighting into my artwork. So hopefully that came across in this piece. Um, just a little bit about the character in the painting that's supposed to be Maria or La Llorona. I kept her skin super, super pale um, just so that she looked kind of like dead. Um, so I used like a lot of purple undertones in her skin, but I kept it really, really light. Um, she's covering one of her eyes, but the other eye is very like bloodshot. Um, I just think that gives it like an extra creepy vibe. I wanted her hair to be kind of messy and kind of like just, you know, I, it's not supposed to be like she's very put together, you know. She's obviously very distraught over losing her husband and losing her children, you know. She's Maria. She was supposed to have everything she ever wanted, and then it just didn't work out for her. So that's basically the whole moral of the story. Like I said, they're slightly different versions, so if you want to look more into that, um, I would highly encourage you to. I think that it would be really interesting. And also, comment down below some of the cool or quirky creepy narratives that you grew up with I would love to hear them I think that they're so so fascinating and that that would be really cool I shared a little bit of my childhood with you guys so I'd like it if you would share some of yours in return and like I said definitely go check out all of the other artists videos I know you won't be sorry because they put so much time and effort into their pieces we all do we all research our themes and prompts and we all keep each other in the loop and encourage each other so um, definitely go check them out because I've seen their work and I know know for a fact that you guys will love it um, here you can see I am going in with some colored pencil I'm using a white colored pencil just to add some highlights in the water and a little bit just on the trees and such um, I'm also, you might notice that for the majority of the piece, I didn't tape the edges down to my table. I do that because I, well, I don't tape down the edges because I tend to move the paper around a lot, but towards the end, the edges were curling up really bad, so I did tape it down towards the very, very end. But for the most part, it doesn't really bother me when the paper buckles a little bit and I have to, like, paint on it still. That doesn't really bother me, so, yeah. But I've been loving using my watercolors lately. It's been so much fun. Hopefully you guys like seeing it too. And that's pretty much it for this piece. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much if you're keeping up with this collective. I really, really appreciate it and hope you guys enjoy future videos. Again, check the description box for all the goodies. And I will see you guys next week with some brand new videos. Bye.